Hello, everyone, and welcome to level two of the Thoughts and Player podcast, a brand new gaming podcast with bold takes and no strings attached. I am here again with my fellow podcasters. I have Corey. Hello, my friends. How are you doing today? And I have David. What up? Now, so first, chill. so chill. Now, yeah. first and foremost, I wanted to send or we wanted to send a thank you to everyone that listened to the first level. We had a lot of positive feedback. We really appreciate that. We're going to keep pushing and create some dope stuff. I am going to make a concerted effort this level to minimize my ums, which means I will be barely, uh, I guess, there understandable. There you go, one. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's actually, I've actually had two already. But with that out the way, let's jump right into the morning announcements. First up, The Last of Us 2 will have a 100 gigabyte download or two discs if you buy the physical version, which is similar to Red Dead Redemption 2. Number two, screenshots of the upcoming stealth game Lord of the Rings Gollum were revealed. Number three, there was free DLC released for Jedi Fallen Order that was revealed on May 4th, which has become Star Wars Day. Number four, Xbox Series X. Xbox is doing their Xbox 2020 remote presentations because of this whole COVID thing. And they showed in this presentation third-party games. Those third-party games that were shown were Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Bright Memory Infinite, Call of the Sea, Chorus, Dirt 5, Scarlet Nexus, Scorn, Second Extinction, The Ascent, the Medium, Vampire, The Masquerade, Bloodlines 2, try to make your <laughs> name any longer than that, Yakuza, Like a Dragon, and of course, <laughs> NFL Madden 21. Number five, Nintendo delayed their June Nintendo Direct, which is normally occurring during E3 or around E3, which is, of course has also been canceled this year due to the outbreak. Number six, the legacy code for Nintendo 64 has been leaked. Number seven, Apex Season 5 began on May 12th. They revealed a new femme fatale character called Loba. I saw the video for it, and that lady is strangely really attractive. And I don't know why <laughs> they made her that attractive. <laughs> Number eight, it has been announced that Tony Hawk 1 and 2 will be remastered. They finally figured out they can't make good Tony Hawk games anymore, so let's remaster the ones that were good. And finally, number nine, Epic. Epic Games, which you might have forgotten as just being the Fortnite makers, they actually make game engines too. And they unveiled their Unreal Engine 5 running on PS5 hardware. But enough about that, guys. Let's get into what really intrigued you. So, Corey, which one of these announcements really intrigued you the most? Yeah, for me, I think it was definitely a Nintendo delaying their June Nintendo Direct. So obviously the Nintendo Direct in June is really their big E3 conference. It happens right around E3, the same time all the other conferences go on. And it's their chance to really reveal the rest of their games that are coming out the rest of the year. Um, a big showcase, you know, and obviously E3 is canceled. But we still have seen a lot of companies go on with conferences. Ubisoft has said they're going to do a conference. Microsoft, of course, I believe EA is going to do one. And it's a little disappointing to me that Nintendo has decided to delay, especially since this year has been kind of weak for them in terms of first party uh, content. Um, so far this year, we've had a big hitter with Animal Crossing. Huge, um, great game. Uh, besides that, I don't really know. Um, there really hasn't been much, you know, there was a uh, there was a Persona X Fire Emblem game. And for the rest of the year, we really don't have a, a hold on what they're going to do. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles Remastered's coming out and they just announced the Paper Mario, thankfully, or else this was going to be. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's just I feel like they they're really dropping the ball on this. Um They've had the good success since they've come out, bringing out two or three heavy hitters every year. And now it feels like this year they've kind of taken a step back. I'm a little disappointed they delayed it because um, who knows by the time they actually show it, it is going to be what, July, August. We'll have 
four or five months left in the year. I don't know. Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, this doesn't seem like it's something that was affected by any of the pandemic stuff. It seems Nintendo just anticipated maybe having a light year this year. Yeah, I mean, they've been for E3, they've been doing this kind of direct for the last four or five years. They don't they don't actually go to the conference and present. They have a booth there, but they always do it through video. And I feel like they just they have a lack of games this year, which is unfortunate because they had a strong year last year. And with the new systems coming out this year, it kind of feels like they might fall a little behind. I don't know. Yeah, you might also think with them releasing the Switch Lite that they would probably have a bit more games for people to adopt to their systems. Yeah, for sure. And they don't really have that heavy hitter like they've had in the past. Like Animal Crossing has been great. Came at the very beginning of the year. You know, previously they've had Zelda, which is a huge seller. They've had Pokemon, which sells systems. And like you said, with the light, they, they don't have anything to push it. So it seems strange to me. And it's and it's definitely disappointing because I'm a big Nintendo fan. I want to see what they're going to put out. And now it's like, I, I don't know. Is this really it? A Paper Mario and a Xenoblade game? Well, was that their two big hitters, Pokemon and Animal Crossing? Uh, Pokemon was last year. Oh, it was? It came out last year, yeah. So that was their big end of the year game. Animal Crossing came out, uh, I, I believe, in March. Okay. And it's a great game, but it's, uh, I think, as I was saying last week or two weeks ago, it was kind of one of those games you play mm, 20 minutes at a time. You know, you turn it on, you check out your village, you go through, you do your routines, you shut it down. Nintendo hasn't this year, for me, had a game where I'm compelled to play it a few hours at a time or weeks on end. And I don't know. It's not good for a major, you know, system maker. Right. Well, hopefully they come with some fire whenever they decide to put that Nintendo Direct out there. Because they they were kind of leading the forefront, I think, in regards to companies kind of ditching E3 and creating their own presentations either at a different site or virtually. And Nintendo's been crushing it with the Directs ever since they started doing them, really. I mean, they were probably the major factor for Sony just not going to E3. Yeah. Sony does their, um, I forget what it's called, like a showcase, you know, like their, their own little Nintendo Direct now. Yeah, their their PSX, um, their PlayStation Experience. No, not even that. That okay. happens like once a year. They've been doing these uh, PlayStation, they're not Directs, I should have looked it up, but they do these PlayStation like broadcast every couple months and show off new things, just like a Nintendo Direct. Not quite as polished as them yet, but... I feel like Nintendo led the way for them being like, oh, we don't really have to do these shows, you know? Yeah. But yeah, that's my two cents on it. Yeah. Um, David, which one of these stories caught your interest? All right, so I'm actually just going to touch two, only because I just want to put out the Tony Hawk. I am so excited. I played that game so much. But on to the real big one for me is the Apex Season 5. I actually just got back into it at the tail end of Season 4. And I'm really hyped for this season. I already started playing. Loba is awesome. Her abilities change the game. Her alt just... You can have all of the uh, inventory of everything nearby. And you don't have to search. It's amazing. And I have to... Not okay, maybe not half, but a lot of the map was changed because Skull Town was exploded, and I, that part of the map is just gone, and that's where I always landed. So I'm kind of upset about that, <laughs> but that it's fine, it's fine. I can land other places, it's a big map. And then they switched the Peacekeeper shotgun with the Mastiff from the World Drop and the ammo, uh, I don't know what to call it the loot boxes and stuff. So, like, I loved the Peacekeeper. I always had the Peacekeeper. The Mastiff, it's just, it's not the same. But it's all right. I still love the season so far. I like the new character. It's it's good. I, I recommend it. If you haven't played Apex yet, now is it's a good time to start. Okay, I've played, uh, I think, two matches when it first came out. Is it, like... It's the same game as when it first came out, right? Like it was leading in some of the categories with like the ping system and you know the traversal was real good. Like it's it's continued to improve on those kind of systems. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're, uh, it's been more efficient, and okay. they've been they've been. Um, I can never think of the words when I need to use them. That's how words work. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> terrible, but they've been 
taking the characters and balancing them, making sure one's not you know overpowered and stuff like that. So it, it, it's it's pretty leveled. And they also they added duos not too long ago because they added that when I stopped playing. Yeah. So there's like duos, and then there's the ranked, and and it's there's a lot there. You you won't get bored. Okay. Um, for your money, Apex is the top right now. Of Battle yeah, Royals. I, oh, yeah, for sure. In my opinion, like, I don't even play Warzone anymore. Um, I don't want to switch topics, but I want to. I want to. This has just come out. I want to hear if you have you heard of the Calling Two. I have not. Yeah, Jeremy. Yeah. Have you seen their uh, pay to play model? I have not. If they had okay. it, and then it, w- it they brought it out, and then no one played it, and then went away, and now they're bringing it back out with this new model, right? Yes, yes. I want to just touch on it because we're talking about battle royals real quick. Sure. All right. So the calling two. It's coming out uh, a couple days, maybe today. I don't know. Um. So you get to play um one free match, and then you can buy the game for five ninety nine. You know, most battle royals are are free at this point, but you pay five ninety nine, and you can play one match a day. And then, if you win that match, you can keep playing. And if you lose it, you can pay ninety nine cents to play again. <laughs> do we do we think this is a uh, a structure that is going to lead the way for battle royals? It will lead the calling to right back into irrelevancy. I yeah, that. Believe that. <laughs> I would. I am. I would not touch that. I just wanted to bring it up because it sounded like the most ridiculous pay to play model I have heard of. Yeah, it is weird. Not only is that a nonsense model, that's a nonsense model for a not well made uh, game. Like, it's not really a a really good game anyway. Yeah, okay. I know people like the first one, but. Yeah, it had a cool little like Hunger Games kind of setup, if I remember right. Yeah. Which was kind of cool. Almost like the first of its kind, you know, even almost before PUBG, it felt like. Um, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up real quick, see what you guys thought, because we were talking Battle Royals. <laughs> terrible idea. Terrible <Okay>. idea. <laughs> and speaking of terrible ideas, the Uh-oh. topic or, or that I wanted to talk about that has my interest is the Xbox 2020 presentation with all the games. If I could do a Likert scale, 1 to 5, 1 to 10, on how useless these presentations are, it would be the highest mark. <laughs> uh, all I have to do is cite no Man's Sky, The Division, Watch Dogs. Uh, let's see, what else? I mean, there's a bunch of other games out there I could name. Anthem, probably the most recent big example, even Fallout 76, where you're shown something a year, year and a half before it's supposed to come out, maybe even six months before it's supposed to come out, and it absolutely isn't what you're shown. We already know this happened. The the One of the biggest flashpoints of it was uh, uh, aliens, space colonial marines, or something like that, right? The gearbox thing, yep. Randy Pitchford selling a vertical splice of the game that looked way better and played differently than the game that was released. So I find these presentations to be mostly completely useless. They, they show you a game, half of them are CG trailers anyway. If they show a, a, a trailer that has gameplay in it, there's absolutely no certainty that that gameplay will either be represented the way it is in the game or in Anthem's case, even be components that actually make the game at all. <laughs> they showed systems and elements and assets in that trailer that weren't, that aren't even in the game and it have not been in the game since it came out. It's going to come in an update, Jeremy. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Give they're going to follow man. that. They're going to follow that roadmap. They put out the month right. after it came out and then scrapped away three months later because mm-hmm. they couldn't follow their own roadmap. Right. Um, right. So, yeah, man, Xbox can show whatever PlayStation can show, whatever. The only the only company I trust to actually put in a game what they show is Nintendo. And that's because Nintendo's QA is impeccable Um, besides that. And they make their own games besides that. uh, These things are useless. They're absolutely they're, they're useless. There's no point to them. Now, now saying all that, did any of these games raise the hype meter even a little bit for you? Like, was there anything on there that was like, oh, that's legit. Okay. Hype meter and interest. Absolutely. There were some games I saw where I was like, that's interesting, but nothing that I would get excited for. I don't get excited for games okay. that much. Um, the game that really killed my gamer spirit is No Man's Sky. <laughs> that thing took my heart and 
it, it, and they took a and it, it found a 357 and it got back the hammer and it just blasted it apart. Did you so buy I, that on day one? I bought that. Yeah, I bought that on day one. Did you get a refund? No. I was able to get a refund. I bought it day one. I talked to Sony day two because that game was a lie. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. Well, I bought it from a GameStop. So mm. I so during that whole transaction, I, transaction, I got to pay two devils, not just one. <laughs> My sell to the devil was brokered by another devil. But no, uh, I didn't get a, a refund or anything like that. And I tried the game. It's cool in the first two, three hours, but it's clearly not what was sold. Right. And that's what I feel like most of these are. Remember the, the splice of watchdogs? Mm-hmm. Where, oh, this looks nothing like how you're presenting in the game. The same with the division. If you look at the trailer for the first division. And based on the the gameplay and what we got when it came out, it's it's nothing close to what they were what they were selling. And I feel like all these are the same thing. They're all going to be the same thing. Well, it's it's definitely more prevalent when a new system's coming out because they can kind of raise the standards as much as they want because the new systems aren't out yet. People are going to start to believe that you know, like oh, this is what the new systems can do. When in reality, they're going to look better, but how much? Who knows? You know. Probably not much, but yeah, that's, that's the thing that had my interest just because I'm watching it and I'm just the whole time. I'm like, that's not happening. That's <laughs> not happening. That's not happening. That's not happening. Oh, you can do this thing right here. This has all the graphical fidelity of like, yeah, whatever. That's not happening. Right. They say, oh yeah, you can play this game. Oh, the, and the Xbox can, Xbox series X can do 4k at up to 120 frames per second. And then a tweet comes out two two days later saying, well, we're not actually making 4K 60p the standard. Oh, really? <laughs> then what's your point? What is and- the point of this thing? <laughs> Breach. Um, all right. All right. I hear you, Jeremy. One game out of there, though, if you had to put a positive spin on it, which one kind of looked cool? You know, if you had to pick one. I'm going to pick Second Extinction because it's a co-op shooter game where you get to shoot dinosaurs. So cool. if you yeah. say something, something dinosaurs is probably going to be pretty cool. OK. Yeah. All right. I'm with you on that one. Um, another one that that whatever I forgot again, the twin stick shooter one. I can't remember which one that was exactly. Uh, but I enjoyed that one, too. And I also found Yakuza like a dragon to be interesting. OK. But I'm not hyped for any of them. Okay. I'm someone. I'm someone that's a uh, that was a huge fan of the Assassin's Creed series, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I can't get with it because I don't know where where are we going? Why am I in Egypt one year and then I'm in Greece in another year and now I'm a Viking another year? Why? Whoever what? that ancestor is gets around. <laughs> well, who, who am I now? It used to be like one ancestor connected them all. Now they're like at every part of the world. I, I don't know. I don't know the story behind it anymore. I, I lost interest after Assassin's Creed uh, Black Flag. <laughs> yeah, they didn't care about that. Because even if you think about the first one, just a real quick one, a real quick diatribe. Even if you think about the first one, we still had the main, the main character in the real world. We had the first one, which was Altair. That took place during the Crusades. And then the second one and the few after that was Ezio in Italy, right? Well, Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here. How did I go from being an Arab to an Italian? How did that happen? (laughs) There's no in between. It's not to say that it couldn't have, but it just would have been. That's an interesting story of how that migration happened. Tell that story. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, I kind of like that Bright Memory Infinite game. Um, yeah. And it is on Steam right now, actually. And I can confirm through secondhand sources that it does actually look that good. Now, whether the game is actually a full-fledged uh, story-based first-person shooter, I have no clue. I'm assuming it's not because it's made by one person. But that's probably the only game that really has my interest. Yeah. And I know, David, you're a big Madden 21 guy, so that's probably that for you, right? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you I'm just trying me. to I'm just trying to get Jeremy going here. <laughs> he mean, was on a roll. When I announced it, I laughed because that's what it deserves. <laughs> right, right. Oh, what's in your upgraded there's an upgraded version. Oh yeah, cool. You could play it on your new system. And we got it for you. Oh right, because they're backwards compatible. I could do it anyway, bro. I mean, thank God it's coming out. 
I had no clue. You know, I thought they were stopping at 20. So good to know 21's coming out. As long as there's sports, there's going to be a game for it <laughs> every year. Now, um, real quick, what would you guys think of that epic uh, Unreal Engine 5? Does that do anything for you guys? It just looks amazing. Like, I, I mean, that's, I guess that's all there is to it for me is, you know, it's, uh, it's a huge update on the graphics of gaming. So just, it just looks real. And yeah, man, that I lighting like and the rocks and, <laughs> and just how she had that orb and it was reflecting off the rocks and all that. It looked, it looked insane. I'm, I'm very excited for PS5 whenever that gets released more later. All I know is that apparently everything in a video game is a triangle. And there's yeah. 180 million, billion millions. triangles. Yeah, millions and trillions of millions, triangles. Millions and billions and trillions of triangles that create that stuff. And it's able right. to render all of it. So, yeah, I thought it, I thought it looked incredible. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, there we go. That's the news. All right. Well, now that we're uh, done talking the round table, let's talk about what we are playing. So, who wants to start this? David, you want to start with this? What have you been playing? Well, I stated earlier, I'm playing a lot of Apex. I've gotten a little bit better, so I'm not landing and dying as much as I used to, which is why I stopped playing in the first place. So I think a little time off really helped with that. And then I'm still st- still stuck on that Dead by Daylight. I just can't get away from it. I just love the concepts. I've been playing a lot more Survivor than I have Killer lately because I was a Killer main for a while. So now that I'm playing both sides, it's actually helped me as a killer so and then uh i've been playing a newer game uh street Rays 4 and uh we'll talk about that later what about uh-huh. you Gord? okay i've uh, been playing a few games animal crossing uh i recently got my town to four stars out of five so i'm very proud of that fact Uh oh um yeah yeah i'm very happy about that um the game i would like to talk about right now is dragon ball z kakarot um, the game came out earlier this year, I believe January, it was uh, announced last year, you know, probably around E3. And when I saw the trailer for it, I knew exactly the type of game it would be. Um, I just knew you saw the trailer, you knew it was going to get mid reviews and it was going to be a decent game and I wasn't going to buy it. Quarantine happened. I got bored. It went on sale. I bought it. I, um, I'm not really happy now. The game is fine. It's it's an action RPG, and it's just a fine game. But my problem with it is I feel like Dragon Ball Z deserves a lot more. Um, I was talking to you guys about this a couple days ago, but uh, Batman came out with the Arkham series. Those games are contenders for Game of the Year. Spider-Man 2018 came out, contender for Game of the Year. Those are big media franchises. Dragon Ball Z is a huge media franchise, not just in Japan, but in America. Every guy our age has watched it growing up. It deserves a just massive, beautiful, well-playing game, and it hasn't received it yet. And it's because fools like me keep buying the mid-tier games. I- I'll take that. That's on me. It's going through the exact. <laughs> yeah, it's going through the exact sagas of the show, which is fine. But we've seen that from Budokai to the uh, Xenoverse games to the Tenkaichi games. We've seen all these sagas, and it's cool, man. It's cool when you're Gohan and you blow Cell away. It was the coolest when it happened the first time. Now that we're on the fifth time, it's just fine. And that's what I can describe the game. It's just fine. As a Dragon Ball Z fan, you're going to get a little enjoyment out of it to see all your characters flying around open world. Um, As a video game fan, I I would not recommend it at all. I mean, it's just a decent RPG, action RPG RPG. And uh, that's my little rant. Thank you for letting me share that. Rants are always yeah, of course, of course. Here on thoughts and players. They're your thoughts, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to beat it in the next couple of days. And I will not discuss it uh, <laughs> ever again. It will not be on my end of the year top list. Uh, nothing like that. It will be beat and it will be forgotten. Um, and also Streets of Rage 4. We'll talk uh, about that later. Ooh. <laughs> Jeremy, tell us. What are you playing, man? So I have been playing. Let's see. I've been playing Bannerlord a little bit. Um, I've also been playing Age of Wonder, Age of Wonders, Planetfall, 
played a little bit of Hotline Miami, got through the first level or so, and then decided to take a break because that game is kind of hard. Uh, and I've also been playing Gears Tactics, which is probably the main game that I'll actually talk about because I was able to play it and beat it. Um, as far as the game, is basically a tactics game. If you're familiar with XCOM or, I don't know, the there was a recent indie game came out called Phoenix Point, which is made by some of the people that made the original XCOM. It's one of those tactic games. In Gears Tactics, you have a person, well, a, f- a squad up to four people you can deploy on the field, control their movements. And what you're basically, the story of the, of the game is that you're trying to catch this mad scientist of these, whatever they call them in Gears, I forgot, uh, named Ukon, who's creating these monstrosities that you fight. And I believe this is a prequel to the mainline series of games. Uh, but the tactics game, it uses cover. It's a cover-based tactics game. So you're using cover just like you would in the uh, in the mainline games. And I found, for the most part, that game to be pretty enjoyable. I had fun with it. I did not have fun with some of the technical aspects surrounding the game, which I will get into. But the actual game itself was pretty enjoyable. Um, the last boss in the game is really grindy, but for the most part, I didn't find the bosses or the levels too grindy. Um, the game is broken down like every other Gears game. There's acts and chapters. Every cha- every act has so many chapters. I believe the first act has six, second has eight, third has eight. But also sometimes within those chapters, there's side missions you have to do, and they help you get more loot. They help you level up your squad members. You are able to upgrade and modify your squad members like you would in XCOM. You can even you can change their names, you can give them different armor, you can upgrade their weapons. You can't really change the weapons. Everyone's kind of locked with a weapon. So snipers, all snipers have basically the same gun, but you can modify aspects of it like the stock or the magazine or the barrel. And that helps gives them different buffs or different kind of ability or attribute boosts and different stuff like that. So um yeah, that game was for the most part pretty, pretty decent. It's a pretty good tactics game. Um, and the other game I've been playing, which we are all going to talk about coming up after the break. We've been kind of blowing through this, so I, I guess we were. I guess I thought we were not as far as I thought we were. But after a short little break, we are going to get into the game that we all have been playing, which is Streets of Rage Four. This level of thoughts and players is brought to you by us. If you've been enjoying the podcast so far, please show your support and let us know by subscribing to the podcast, following us on the socials, and contributing to community surveys and questions around our community segments. Doing so will help the podcast grow, keep our content engaging, and most importantly, make sure your voice is heard. Thanks for tuning in, and now, back to the show. And we are back with more thoughts and players. We are moving on to our next segment that always follows the break. It is a segment that you love, we love. It is, was it worth it? And for today's level, we are going to be discussing, as I said, a game we all have played, Streets of Rage 4. Yes. So, Let's start. Uh, let's start with Corey on this one. Corey, was it worth it? All right, man. Let me start off by saying this. Um, growing up, a big portion of my childhood was playing the Teenage Mutant and Ninja Turtles games with my mother. My mother is a gamer. Hi, mom. I love you. So I love beat 'em ups. I loved beat 'em ups. Um, I haven't played a lot in the last couple of years. I think the last one I played before this was Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Great game. Streets of Rage Four. Hit that nostalgia. It um, it hit it and it um, exceeded it. The graphics look amazing. I love the art style, the entire thing. Uh, the music, it, the music's great. Um, from that opening menu music to each level, it sounds unique. Uh, it was a ton of fun. Combat was good. I actually really like the system where you press the uh, power attack and you lose life, but you have a chance to get it back if you're if you're good enough at the game. So it's a very good risk versus reward. A um, little bit on the shorter side, but. I really enjoyed the game. Um, I beat it. I tried to beat it a second time on hard. They did not lie. It was hard. So <laughs> I did not do that. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I really enjoyed my time with it. Played it online uh, with a couple friends. The online was pretty steady. 
Uh, it sucks that you can't do four player online, but I understand. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, was it worth it for me personally? Um, I played it on Game Pass, so it was part of my subscription. 100% it was worth it, especially if you have Game Pass. Now, uh, $5 price for it, is it worth it? Um, that's really up to you. Uh, the game's kind of repetitive, being that it's a beat em up. You know, you're doing the combos, you're walking from left to right, going from screen to screen. Um, it also has a, uh, a rather slow movement speed. Um, you you kind of just walk. You'll walk from left to right, and you're not very fast at all. And that that kind of got to me. I was doing a lot of jumping and diving. So, uh, yeah, those were – that was really my only negative in the game. I had a good time. It was short. Um, to me, it was worth it. Yeah, your character has a very calm, slow, calm – yeah, deliberate kind of walk for someone that uh, over the course of time has to beat hundreds of people. Yeah, they're not in a rush, man. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah, yeah. David – you got to play it. Was it worth it? Yes, I paid for it. I was waiting for it. I was looking up stuff for the podcast, and I saw Street Rage 4. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I instantly went and put it on my wish list. And most of the time with nostalgia, you go back, and it's years later. You have a different mindset, and you're just like, I just liked it. I guess i just don't anymore but this nostalgia hit and i still like it it didn't have an effect even though i haven't played a beat em up in 15 years i like corset i liked the music it's amazing i like the style of it i like the graphics it just all flowed well for me and i didn't beat it yet i haven't put much time into it but i've I've beat half of it so far and it's great. So being a full game and it's only 25 bucks, it's worth it. And like Corey said, it, if it's not, if you have game pass, try it and guarantee you, you'll at least enjoy it. What about you, Jeremy? I would have to agree with all your sentiments. Um, art style is great. Music is great. The combat feels good and gratifying. You do walk super slow. <laughs> that is somewhat frustrating. I thought the variation in bosses was pretty good. Yeah, I thought it was overall a really good effort. And I know when you beat the game, you're able to unlock the retro characters. So basically how they would look in their 16-bit forms, um, as well as some hidden bosses in there. So I think if you're into that kind of stuff, it's definitely worth a second or third playthrough. On oh, 25 bucks, man. I mean, it's pretty short for it. It is short. It is short, but I would say, I think we were kind of saying before that maybe we could estimate that a playthrough is maybe four, four or five hours. Um, so if you're going to play it a couple of times and maybe unlock some characters, if you're a completionist and almost every game is worth it, but if you're going to yeah, go course. through, and play for a couple of times, unlock some characters, some hidden bosses, experience that. Then you're looking at close to eight, nine-ish hours worth of content. And for 25 bucks, that seems to be of good value. So I think it was worth it. Now, does this kind of get you to want to play more beat em ups in the future? Like uh, if Streets of Rage 5 comes out next year, are you going to be just as hyped to play that one? Or is it kind of like you got your fill of that genre? You're good for a little while. Um, no, yeah, no year, no yearly releases, please. Is all I would say. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> I feel the same way. I don't think I'd be as hyped as I was because Street Rage Three came out on Sega, so that just says how long it's been since it's came out. But I mean, I would still want to get it and play it, just because growing up with Street Rage, I, I just. I just feel obligated to support it. I, uh, I love the licensed ones, like the Simpsons. Love playing that in the arcades. Uh, the Turtles, the uh, the X Men arcade one, man. Ah, Nightcrawler, man, awesome. Do more of the licensed ones, and I'll buy every one that comes out. Yeah, those are pretty cool. Yeah. So I think we're uh, three for three on this one, right? For we are, two is, weeks in a row. Yeah. We are. Yeah, actually. 
All right. In two weeks, Kakarot. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, we gotta, we gotta eventually do a game where we're gonna say it's not worth it because we sound like we're just putting it out there for to buy all the games. <laughs> and that's the beauty about gaming. There's a game we love. We want to share it with people. We're, we're not endorsed. We swear. <laughs> We yeah, would love to be, though. Believe me, we will find plenty of games. There, plenty of games. I did not get ten grand to get Street to Rage out there. I swear. <laughs> right. So, speaking of Streets of Rage, we've all endorsed it. We think it's worth it. The $25 price tag, or like Corey said, if you have Xbox Game Pass and you can play it on there, I'm pretty sure it's a lot easier to access on the console than their PC. <laughs> then let's talk about because the streets of rage is about beating up everyone everybody but it's also about beating up the bosses so for our chumped and chomped segment let's talk about those bosses just a couple of them a few that we thought uh, we found interesting or difficult um david you've not completed it yep. yet so i want to get your impressions of so far within that first half of the game which bosses did you find to be the most difficult uh, stage six, I think is what I'm f- on right now. And I only lost the one time, but the, the ninja guy, I don't know his name, but he was just ridiculous. Just jumping around and he has like a hologram thing he sends after you. Like, I don't know. It was, it was too much for me. So I'm gonna have to go back and try a couple times to understand how to evade every, everything and kill him. And then there was, uh. A chick with an eel that like shocked you. That was annoying. It wasn't necessarily hard, but really annoying. Yeah, I think her name was Eel Chick in the game. That's <laughs> literally great. Right. Oh boy, no right. one left. Right. <laughs> Move on. Cut, cut that. Cut that. <laughs> I'm going to leave it in, and I'm going to turn the volume up on it when it comes oh, from. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, uh, the commissioner, I think his name was the the, the Detroit, the not Detroit, the detective, <laughs> whatever. I don't know. The yeah. police guy. Yeah, he he I lost him once, but I beat him the second time. But he, his moveset was interesting. Just running across the entire screen just to grab you and throw you across back where he came from. is <laughs> absurd. Right. But I mean, yeah, just having. I haven't played any games with bosses in a long time. So, I mean, they were all just kind of not easy for me. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, I think that when you're talking about with the electricity eel, her name is Diva. I think that's the first boss. Okay. Yes. <laughs> she is annoying. Yeah, it's very annoying. Um, Corey, what, what, bosses, what bosses got to you? All right, I don't know if we're really voting on Chumped or Champ this week, Chomp this week, but I uh, I got Chumped throughout the entirety of this game. Uh, I'll admit it. I'll yeah, that's what that. I was going to say. I was like, I'm um, not Chumped. The one that really got me, I think, was Shiva. Um, and I believe that's the same boss that you were having trouble with, David. Uh, you start in Chinatown. You go through it. You'll fight a martial arts type dude. You get past mm-hmm. that. And then you go through the gauntlet. There, You go through rooms. And you got all these guys. Uh, you got 45 Dylans in there. Um, real cool dude though. We went out for coffee afterwards. He, he understood it was fine. Um, so you fight a bunch of Dylans, you fight a bunch of these other dudes, and then you finally get to Shiva who is just, he's making ghost forms, man. Like I can't do that. He's flying around the arena like crazy. And he beat me so bad that, um, I had to use assist mode, which is never a good sign. And, uh, oh, I didn't wow. use yeah, yeah. So there's three levels of assist mode. You know, you go to assist, you you do the first one. It gives you one extra life. I, I didn't even get close to beating this guy, so I never even went to that one. Uh, and it takes <laughs> away half your points. Second planning. assist gives you three extra lives, and it takes away, you know, it cuts your points by uh, one fifth. I went right to the strongest one. I got five extra lives. I cut my score by one tenth, and uh, yeah, I manhandled him. I just destroyed him. <laughs> Wasn't my fault. I had five lives, and he only had one. You know what I'm saying? So you I, said you tried to go I, through on hard. Where did you end up not getting past? I actually did better on hard. I got to the fourth level by myself. Um, but it was okay, difficult. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, when I was trying to beat the game the first time, I also had trouble with uh, the final bosses. I don't know if we're really spoiling them. Um, 
but yeah, I tried to play online with some randoms. It disconnected a couple times. Uh, but yeah, those guys were hard too. I just got beat in this game. All right. That's what retries are for. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Um, as far as difficult bosses, the first one that really annoyed me was the I don't know with the the like the corporal lady, uh, army lady where you're fighting oh, her. Oh yeah. God, yeah. Oh, she has the her special power thing is the special attacks in Streets of Rage Two. I really liked that. Yeah. Oh, throwing the bombs down on the arena. Yeah. The anyway, missiles. sorry. Go ahead. No, yeah, no, yeah. That that was like a cool callback, but that's that was the first one that got me annoyed, especially when I'm fighting her, and I hear her say, "Hey, call it in backup," and you never really want to hear that <laughs> in any in any case of dealing with any kind of <laughs> law enforcement. So, yeah, that was the first one that annoyed me, but the one that probably got me the most was whatever I forgot the I forgot what what level it is, but. It's the the two the two we talked about the one lady eel or the one lady <laughs> with the eel in her arm. They have another level later eel on girl. in the game. Eel girl, right. They have another level later on in the game that has two eel girls. Right. One eel that, girl two. Eel girl no, eel girls two and three, right? Oh, you're right. Yeah. One that has poison and one that has fire. And they both and it's just nonsense because they they both have area attacks. They can summon those area attacks wherever on the on the level but they can also summon them right where they are so when you go to punch them oh i get hit by an area attack but then they also have regular strikes and those strikes are quick so you're going in the fight you get hit by a quick strike and then you finally recover you go in to get another hit oh area attack i'm trying to mm. punch poison ill chick lady and meanwhile fire ill chick ladies just jump behind me and did an area attack so now i'm getting burned then i get hit with poison and this is just happening they they have so much life and it's in like this little place. I don't know if it was in a storage unit or something. <laughs> the whole thing just, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. <laughs> that's, I'm so excited to get there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the one that got to me the most. The one that actually made me think, oh, this is legit, was the actual commissioner. It was that because you're right. As Corey said, you're so slow. And the fact that this guy gets the leap from one side of the screen to the other, take you, grab you, and toss you to the other side, and he tosses you to the other side so you can what? Walk <laughs> super slow over to where you just were to fight him again, and he can do the same thing all over. So, <laughs> yeah, that was that one was definitely like, a, oh, no, this is serious. I've got to really put my game on. Yeah. Did you guys have a favorite character that you picked yourself? Who did you guys main? Uh, I can't remember her name, but she's in the first one. Blaze. The second one, Blaze. Yes, that's. Yes. I, I I originally started with Axel, and I just his move set wasn't fitting for me, so I went with her, and it was a lot better. Yeah, I love Blaze. That's who I picked too. Yeah, I had someone else, and then I went to Axel, and I just I stuck with them because we said the art style was great. The only thing that I thought was kind of it was kind of, uh, I guess, suspect was his beard. He had a very terrible looking <laughs> beard. So I stuck it with him on that. Thick. All the all the cut scenes, you see this terrible, thick, raggedy beard. And I'm like, all right, cool, I can work with that. <laughs> Did you watch the cut scenes? Oh, yeah. Was it a good story? Uh, it was oh, a story. No. <laughs> it was a story. I mean, it made sense. I okay. liked, I've liked what I've gotten up to. I watched them all. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, it's it's no Last of Us, but yeah, you know, it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's a good it's a good story for what it needs to be. Well, All it's right. apples and meatballs, man. Come on, <laughs> sure, apples and meatballs. Yeah, sure. gotcha. Okay, maybe I'll play it again and uh, watch the story because <laughs> I skip that every time. Oh wow, <laughs> you're one of those people, huh? No, no, never, never. But I don't know, beat 'em ups, man. I, I know what I have to do. I've got right. I've got to beat 'em up. I'm here to fight. <laughs> That's it. Story. I what story? Up, man. Skip, skip. I'm going to fight every guy on that screen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, let's see, you guys. We're done talking about Streets of Rage. We recommend it. We believe it was worth it. It has some pretty hard bosses that will give you a challenge. Um, now, we weren't, I guess, really hoping or wishing for a game like Streets of Rage 4, but we're glad it's out. But that leads us to our new segment called could you please? This segment is 
essentially a wish list for us. E- each of us name off something that we wish some company or some developer or some entity unbeknownst to us would do to satiate our gamer appetite and make our dreams come true. So with that being said, Corey, start us off. Okay, I was going to come out with a lot more anger than I have now. I've mellowed out in my uh, older days, so... Um, no, 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 Let the hate flow through you. <laughs> yeah, well, well the, here's the I thing. The we, to we, we are going to get this. It's just a matter of time, so I guess I'll just go. Sony, could you please let us know about the PS5? That's all I want to know. And I guess this can extend to Microsoft. Microsoft's done a little bit better job of giving us information throughout the process of the new systems. But Sony, I want to know what your console looks like. I want to know the games coming out on it. I want to know the price tag. I'm going to buy it. But I would like to kind of prepare for it a little bit. You know, know that I want it. Warm up to it a little bit. Have it wine and dine me. And we are mm, five, six months away. And I, I don't know anything about it. I know what the controller looks like. That's great. I want to know the price. I want to know what the council looks like. I want to know the games. I want to know that God of War 2 will be a launch title or Spider-Man 2 will be out there. Or Horizon Zero Dawn. I just, Sony, please, could you? Could you Could you throw me something? That's fair, right? Totally fair. Okay. <laughs> it's on the fair side, yeah, yeah. Um, based on our wish list, David's bringing the positivity, so I'll go next, so that way we can end this on some positive vibes. Um, so for me, uh, Microsoft, could you please fix your effing releases on <laughs> Game Pass Ultra for the PC? So when I talked about Gears Tactics, the thing that I was talking about, that technical aspect around it, I constantly, constantly got a graphic card error For a graphics card, I know it's compatible with it, and I know it's strong enough to take whatever graphic fidelity you think they're producing with it, okay? This same error has shown up on Gears of War 5. This same error has shown up on Gears of War 4. This same error seems to show up on just Microsoft Game Studio releases on a Microsoft-owned platform that's on a Microsoft-owned platform. (laughs) <laughs> what the heck is going on? We don't want to wait anymore. I understand that it's a beta. It's been a beta for a year and a half. And there are so many bigger things right now in the world we're trying to figure out that it's a bit frustrating that Microsoft can't figure out how to make sure their games can work properly on their platform that is, again, on their own platform. If you want to play Gears Tactics, Gears Tactics, by the way, Gears of War, which has been a constantly Microsoft console selling thing, Gears Tactics isn't on Xbox. You can only play it on PC. So this is the only way that someone that's interested in that game can play it. And if they have to go through the frustrations of having these errors, I had the error. I tried to fix the error. I readjusted my computer. I set my settings for the computer to be auto, so I had to write everything. And instead, my computer gave me the wrong date and time. And Microsoft has it. If you have the wrong date and time, nothing launches. So I have to do that and try to fix that and then go back just so I can play this game. That's just good. If I had to do this for, I don't know, The Last of Us or Skyrim, maybe it'd be a bit less uh, uh, anger there or frustration there. But come on, man. It's just Gears Tactics. <laughs> Please. Um, I'm done. Is there a chance that maybe that is a feature? Right. (laughs) Right. Right. Absolutely a feature. Again, I I was saying I was I was so angry that I started laughing because it just didn't make sense how angry I was about this. But I will save that anger for our immediately next segment. David, you are bringing positivity. Please bring some positivity to us and to the people. What is your could you please? All right, it's very, very positive, very positive, and it could be very easily done. It just needs the time. All I'm wishing for is Nintendo. Please give us another F Zero game. I spent just as much time in F Zero X as I did Mario Kart. I played F Zero GX a lot. Like even if it was a, a remaster, so. 
I could play it on the Switch or PC or something. I just, I loved what F-Zero brought. I know that there's F-Zero maps on Mario Kart, but that's that's not the same. That's that's like bringing Link in Mario Kart. The, cool, I can play him, but I can't go around and break pots and collect rubies, you know? <laughs> it's It's close, but, you know, no cigar. So, just please, please, a remaster, a new game. Like, like show why people know who Captain Falcon is. He's the not just Bros. a fighter from Smash from Bros. Smash I, Bros. Will, yeah. I will come to your house, Corey. <laughs> I swear to God. And, you, and you'll Falcon punch me, right? <sighs> no, I'm going to get in my <laughs> Falcon mobile. I'd say I'd run you over, but they float, so it won't do anything. Good to know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, F Zero was just—it was great. And with the nostalgia of Street of Rage Four that just came out, I mean, F Zero X. I it was, please, please, and that's 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 my positive. And I second that. I I think I third that. I've never played the F Zero games, <laughs> but I think I third that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, keeping up with that, we are now going to move on to the final segment of our show. These are our final thoughts. And David, what is your final thought? My final thought is if you're interested in the games that I like, playing Apex, Dead by Daylight, Streets of Rage. Uh, I still play some Overwatch from time to time. I do stream on Twitch. It's uh, Blind Rapper, B L I N D R E P E R. I stream every Tuesday night and at least every other weekend. So come give me a follow and we'll talk. We'll be making sure to put the link to that in the show notes as well as any of the socials. Um, I will. Uh, I'll go next, and I'll let Corey take us out with that, with his final thought. My final thought is Xbox Series X coming up, PS5 coming up. These are great things. These are awesome things. Bethesda, if I see another bleeping remaster for Skyrim, I am gonna flip my lid. You have <laughs> you have 17 of those. This game is almost 10 years old. We know you're making on another one. You're making another one, but you're making another game before that one. And we don't know what. I understand that. All right, but no more. Last, this was the last remaster. You made it for Xbox One, PlayStation Four. You remastered the PC version. I don't know how that <laughs> happens, but you did it. Enough. No more remasters, Bethesda. We're done. All right, we're done. That's my final thought. Corey, what is your final thought? My final thought is I want a remaster of a Mass Effect trilogy. Please. Um, it goes against everything you just said, Jeremy, but Mass Effect is such a special series to me. And I have heard rumors that it's being developed and it's going to come out next March. And I'm very excited for it. I know you can play it on the Xbox through backwards compatible. I want it to be shiny. I want a new coat of paint. I want to play those games in all the glory of 4K, 60 frames per second. And that is the remaster I want. So make it happen, EA. I know you listen. Yeah. You're just you just don't listen, man. <laughs> you're, just, you're just not listening. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Sure. Yeah. Well, um, speaking of listening, that is it for level two of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast service. We are on Apple Podcasts officially. We are on Google Podcasts officially. Just look us up. You'll see the nice little blue and orange symbol. Click that subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. You can also like the podcast on Facebook at facebook.com slash thoughts and players, all one word, as well as on Instagram at thoughts.players. Thanks again, everyone, for listening. And we will catch you on the next level. Bye. Thank you.